Hi there, my name's Aaron. I go by Foo Barbecue, and I've been working for the last uh, year and a half or so on a system for organizing all of your UAV log data and for syncing it up with videos that you may have of your flights or from your vehicles. So After Flight is a browser-based solution for this problem where you have way more data than you can handle and uh, it's hard to organize. It provides the ability to sync up video and it detects events for you automatically and allows you to confirm them or delete them. So to upload a new log, you begin with the upload button in the upper right hand corner. And it will want you to identify yourself. You can use Google, Facebook, GitHub, or you can create your own local after flight username and password. Uh, let's use Facebook for now. If this was your first time trying to log in to Afterflight through Facebook, it would ask you for permission. The permissions are um, only your username. I don't ask for any extra you know, access to your friends or ability to post on your wall or anything like that. Um, so now we're logged in and we can see it says Foo Barbecue's flight. So it's just taken my Facebook uh, ID, which is, you know, if you go to facebook.com slash Foo Barbecue, that's me. So log file, hit browse. I'm going to choose um, a 3.6 megabyte data flash log that was downloaded from my Arju copter using uh, Mission Planner. And write some notes about it. Um, let's just say this was... Uh, near old mine tower at Lopez. Can't type today. Mine district. Manganese district. Let's be detailed. Okay. And then when you press upload, you'll get some progress feedback here. I have kind of a slow internet connection, so that's how long it takes to upload three megabytes. Um, so while that's uploading, well, actually it doesn't look like it will take very long. Um, but let's just say I've also found the video that I've uploaded to YouTube for this flight, which is here. Uh, and that we're going to link that up. Okay. So once the file has uploaded to the server, which has just completed. We'll get some processing information. So the file is now on the server, and what it's doing is it's taken all the lines, it's turned them into a pandas data frame. Pandas is the is a Python data analysis package. Um, so it's loaded your whole log into memory on the server, split it up into tables for each uh, message type. So like right now it's processing the motor types, right now it's motor, motor messages, right now it's processing the attitude uh, messages. And um, it's taking these and inserting them into a database. The database is uh, SQLite, SQLite right now. I would rather be using Postgres, but I've been forced to use uh, SQLite um, because of uh, Pandas compatibility issues. Okay, bam, here we got our um, flight detail view. Uh, I'm gonna make the, there we go, make this full screen so that you guys can see a little better. So here I have um, a graph of sensor data and by default it just starts by graphing um, for two, two motors here. Um, we could, maybe we wanted to graph uh, let's say the throttle input against one of the motors. So if I hit update plot, it's it'll retrieve that data, there we go. Um, so the right y-axis is throttle in, so that's yellow, and then the left is motor one. So you can see these values are different orders of magnitude on the, well, the, the same order of magnitude, but there there's a, a dual y-axis. To drag, to zoom, you can click and drag, and then to reset the zoom, you click reset zoom. So let's add a YouTube video to this flight. Um, so you click connect a YouTube video to this flight and choose your flight. That'll In future versions of After Flight, that'll probably be automatic there. Um, the URL is not quite the same as the YouTube URL. If you click, if you click share, um, what you're interested in is this string of characters 
at the end of the URL. So, so put this in and it's actually going to be youtube.com slash v slash that string of characters. Uh, so you do have to change that at the moment. Um, future versions will do that for you automatically. Okay, so hit submit query and it will add that video to your flight. There you go. We just had a blank box here before. Now we've got a video. And if you press play, you'll see that the time bar on the graph moves as well as the time bar on the timeline. And you've got a new item on the timeline here that says start of onboard video. Chances are that you didn't start recording your video at exactly the same time that your log started. So if we hit play, um, we can see that the time bar on the graph and on the timeline move along with the uh, scrubber here on the YouTube video. Um, and what we want to do is find an event which is evident in both the sensor data and the video. So at about, I think about 14 seconds here, you'll hear that I test the motors a little bit to make sure they're spinning in the right direction and things. There you go. So there were two, I, I just bumped the throttle up twice. And if we look at this graph, that's quite a clear signature right there. Um, but I just paused it right after that happened and you can see the time bar is pretty far off. So let's try to pause it exactly on the second uh, bump. Okay, so I've paused it at just about 14 seconds. And the easiest way to figure out the delay here is look at this time bar um, and check the box here where it says 5447. So that, that happens at 5447, but it actually happens at I mean, on the video, it's 5447. In, in the log, it's 5440. So the log has absolute time from the GPS timestamps. Um, so what we're going to do is move the video so that it corresponds to the log. So the video needs to be moved seven seconds back in time. So we can use the timeline here. Use your scroll wheel on your mouse to increase the resolution, you know, zoom in to the point that you can actually see seconds and we want to go back in time by seven seconds so instead of 33 we're going to move this to 26. Um, all of these events have um, context information that shows up in the upper right hand corner of the timeline uh, and when you move the start of the onboard video it gives you a button that says set video start to and then the absolute time that you'd be setting it to so you click on that, it gives you confirmation, delay time change. That means that it's successfully updated the delay time in the database. So now if you reload this page, it's gonna, um, the start of onboard video will be at 26 seconds. And it also updates it in the JavaScript. So if we hit play now, this time bar is gonna move seven seconds back. Um, and if we just rewind back to the beginning of the video, uh, you can also scrub on the timeline, by the way. You can move this bar around and it'll, it'll, it's linked to the YouTube um, time bar. Okay, I think it's worth mentioning uh, one of the other features, which is the ability to annotate your flight event timelines. So let's say that I want to uh, create a record of all the times that I did interesting things in this video, like, for example, when I flew through the, through the tower itself. Um, there is this little widget here that you type in your annotation. So, um, so I'm going to pause it right there where I flew through. Uh, so I know what time that is. So, okay, I think I think we're on our way through. All right, so I'll pause it right there. Um, so in the annotation text box here, I put. Uh, flew through tower or between tower girders flew between girders because that might be useful for you know video I'm making later on and I'll say add annotation to at, at blue time bar so that blue time bar is this thing here um, cool and then when I want to save this to the database um, I click save annotations uh, there's no confirmation on that yet there, there will be soon um, and then when you reload this page, you'll be you'll, you'll uh, when you come back to this later, it'll it'll be there. Uh, and you can also edit this. Um, you can move it or delete it. Oh, I think I pressed the button twice. 
Um, but uh, at the moment, oh yeah, and then, and then you can hit save again and it'll save it. Well, that concludes your brief introduction to After Flight. Stay tuned for lots of updates to this software. I'm, I have some pretty big ideas about um, replacing the entire JavaScript interface with uh, d3.js. Um, I'm working pretty hard to expand the number of events that can be, uh, the type of events that can be automatically detected. Eventually, I'd actually like to have this set up so that you don't need to manually set the delay for your videos. Um, your videos will automatically be wiggle matched to log files. Um, if you'd like to see these exciting features built into After Flight, uh, click on my About link here and send me some money so that I can actually work on this. It's entirely um, a free time project for me right now and it's not funded by anyone. So if you want to help out, I would really appreciate it. Additionally, if you find bugs in After Flight, please go to the GitHub page. There's a link uh, from the About page on, my, on, on the public server. Click on that GitHub link and then there's an issue tracker there where you can post any bugs you find or uh, features that you would like to see added, particular capabilities for your situation, and I'll try and get to them as quickly as I can. If anyone would like to contribute some code to After Flight, I'm very open to collaboration and I'd love to see uh, some improvements to how I've written things and new features that I don't have to write myself, that'd be great. So to do that, just uh, submit a pull request using the new pull request button on the GitHub page. Well, thanks for watching. And just remember, when life gives you foo, have a barbecue.